izweletu Africa inkululeko Africa Peku has already uh, done the work um, but I know that there are those of us that do not know what uh, Sobu Kwe clause was. I'm going to go the batim um, on the on the Sobu Kwe clause and, and the motivation on Sobu Kwe clause. Not so long ago, uh, here in this country, um, all Africans had to carry their passes that regulated their movement. Um, not so long ago, uh, this was the law that said, um, you are not a citizen of this country, and in order for you to show that you are indeed, or you were born here, you must show the pass, which was called Dom, Dom Pass, or the stupid pass. So every time a white policeman comes and uh, question your existence, you must produce that document, that document um, which was a life to Africans. It is stated that this document, this identity document, or this document that um, states that you are indeed a, a South African, um, but an alien in your own land because South Africa as an establishment, as a country, is, I can describe it as, as, a, as a consolidation of land robbery and when the Af uh, South Africa was established uh, by Act of 1909, uh, it was established in um, 1910. There, the whites had to unite in order to take over the land because they had conquered the Africans. Uh, the issue of the land then, therefore, is the primary uh, contradiction of our struggle. Um, our ancestors fought for the land. Nothing else, they resisted, they fought the, all, the, all the wars of resistance. Uh, it was because of the land. They resisted, resisted the land robbery. But then they were conquered. After they were conquered then, then the forces, uh, which Sobukwe described as evil forces, Sobukwe described as um, the battle between Europe and Africa. Uh, he, he, say, he states that it was um, the battle be between the European invaders and indigenous Afri African uh, indigenous landowners. And he says it was, it was the battle um, by the Europe to take over Africa. So the Union of South Africa then was established. The name South Africa and its establishment is as a result of the colonial, the, the, the colonial conquest. It is as a result of... Um, um, uh, the conquest, so it has nothing, it had nothing to do with the Africans. Yeah. Now, Sobukwe is born in 1924, after the establishment of South Africa. Um, and that date, or that year is important, because in 1924, uh, they formed, that is, uh, the whites formed a, a pact government wherein John uh, Herzog was the Prime Minister and the, and the Minister of Land Affairs. So what happened is that Sobukwe was born on that year. And then when we look at 
the timeline of Sobukwe. We are introduced to Sobukwe at Forte as a leader of the SRC. And when he was uh, talking to the community of Forte, um, he was speaking to, the, to those that were, he was a completer. He was speaking to those that were in Forte and those that were going out of Forte. So in 1949 already, on the 21st of October, he outlines, at that time he was, 20, he was only 26 years, he outlines his mission on earth. He outlines the Pan-Africanist Manifesto. At that time he was not a leader of the, of the BAC, he was still a member of the ANC Youth League. But he outlines in that speech what he was about. He states that to the people that were to the community, he pleads with them. He says, uh, let me plead with you, lovers of my Africa, to carry with you in the into the world the vision of a new Africa, an Africa reborn, an Africa rejuvenated, an Africa recreated, young Africa. We are the first glimmers of a new dawn, and if we were persecuted, for our views, we should remember, as African saying goes, that it is darkest before dawn, and that the dying beast kicks more violently when it is giving up the ghost, so as to speak. So when I am called to, to, to say anything regarding Sobukwe, you know, it's a, it's a really huge task, because um, there was this prophecy to those that were in that gathering to the Africans that carry with you this vision of Africa, this vision of Africa that is Africa that is liberated, the vision of Africa, of a government of Africans by Africans for Africans. Uh, carry with you this. Now, when um, I look at what one has done so far in life, I mean, after 40 years, and you look at this 26-year-old, and you, you are shaken and you're like, hey, it seems as if I have not done, I have not carried that, uh, um, that message uh, by Sobuk. So what happened then is that all Africans then had to produce this, um, this dompas, you know, to show that we are, we, 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 we are existent. Um, Mafrika Pego, Dr. Pego, states that in, in his book that Africans would go into the fires trying to save this little document because once you are found that you do not have this document that states that you are a South African, um, an alien, uh, then you, you have this dumpers to carry on um, every time you go. They would die trying to save that uh, dumpers because when they are found, they have to produce it. And if they, are, they, they don't produce it, they are charged and they are detained, arrested and detained and, and all that. Now, Sobukwe uh, in, 19, in 1960 looked at the situation and said, um, but we are, as Africans, we are not ex in, in existence. We, we are not existing in this country because we have to produce this document if we want to prove that we were born in this country. Now, Sobukwe says we must start with this. Our mission is to unite Africa. Our mission is to have this government for, uh, of Africans for, Afri uh, for Africans by Africans and if anyone that accepts the democratic ruling and governance of Africans. So he says, then let's, um, let's deal with this issue because our people have accepted the humiliation of being um, non-beings. Let's not, let's not carry this, this document. 
let's go and tell the police you can arrest us because we're not carrying this document anymore. Our existence, we are our face. We are not going to show you some document that we have to pay, to pay for. And it is said the, the price of that document was equal to two months, two and a half months wage. So imagine in your own country. So they, 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 they organize this, um, uh, uh, this, this march, uh, this campaign. They said, we are going to start with this campaign. What we are, after this campaign, we are going to continue and, and, and restore the land to the rightful owners. But let's start with this thing because our people have accepted this. They have accepted that we are not the owners of the land. They have accepted slavery. They, are, they, they have accepted um, that they are nobody. Now, they were, of course, we know what happened to Shepville. They were arrested and charged. Um, we then, the next thing we see Sobukwe in, and, and 24 others um, at, at the magistrate court, it was a mere magistrate court in, here in Johannesburg, charging them for, um, for that, um, for that, uh, um, for disobeying the law. Now, lawyers, um, generally, they are the most reactionary people on earth because lawyers, they, they believe somehow that the law is holy, that, that the law is, God has, uh, you know, has summoned the law and the law should not be disobeyed. So you cannot be a politician and be a lawyer. So the, the offense sitters in, in, during the apartheid, they would not come out and fight, you know, but they will implement the laws. And our laws, our South African laws, the, its foundation is based on colonialism, it's based on, on, on imperialism, it's, it's based on racism, it's based on patriarchy. So we cannot divorce law from our own history. But the lawyers, they like to think that it can be separated because law, you're supposed to be So um, I am going to just look, we're just going to look at the Sobukwe clause and what was the motivation to put, uh, to, to, to make, to enact the law and to put a, 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 an amendment in the law. The Minister of Justice introduced this general amendment bill, which was specifically aimed at Sobukwe. No other political prisoner. It was specifically aimed at him. Um, Africa Pego has already stated what he was about and what the Pan-Africanist Congress was, was about. Then he said, he said, then we have come, I quote, then we have come to close four. This is a long clause and it has been drafted in a complicated manner. I appreciate again that the principle of this clause is drastic. The principle is nothing more or less than the minister is given the right to further detain a person. Just is to say in respect of a person only who is serving a term of imprisonment, but imprisonment under the law referred to in this clause. In other words, it is imprisonment in respect of any other crime. Then the minister may cause such person to be detained in custody for a longer period. I want to tell the honorable members why we are inserting this clause. We may find it necessary. Honorable members are as aware as I am that Sobukwe will have served his sentence on 3rd May. 
If honorable members have read their, their newspapers, they will know as well as I do that, that he was firstly leader of the PAC and I can tell honorable members there has been no change of heart in him during the time he has not, be, he has not been in our midst. I want to put it to honorable members candidly so that they may place themselves in my position. If the government and the government has to consider this matter comes to the conclusion, having regard to the circumstances and they have developed and the facts as exposed in the Snyman Commission report, that it would be failing its duty to peaceful citizenry if it were to set this man free. This, will, this clause will be used to keep him there longer. Sir, I know it is challengeable, and I know the principle is that here is a man who has served his sentence. But having regard to the circumstances, the government may decide that it may be necessary for the security of the state to do so. For here we are dealing with a person, let me say, who has a strong magnetic personality, a person who can organize, a person who feels that he has a vocation to perform his task, well knowing the method that will be applied, as I have told you. That is the principle of clause four. Here is the man he has served. He has served his sentence. There is no other charge. He was, he, was, he was sentenced by a magistrate court for three years. Now he has served his sentence, but then um, during the time of his imprisonment, we know that Porco rose, arose and fought. So what happened is that then there was a Snayman Commission. This name commission, like all these commissions that are, no. that are now, you know, we have many commissions today, but there was a Snyman Commission that was specifically appointed to deal with Sobukwe and, 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 and Boko activities. So Judge Snyman sat in that commission and came up with the recommendations that even though Sobukwe is in prison and many uh, members of the BAC were imprisoned, but the Poco um, activities, you know, they are, they are killing, you know, they are killing. And we know that um, recently, or especially last year and this year, they were, the, the Poco warriors were more than 200 of them. They, they were reburied, you know, because they were, um, they were sentenced to death by hanging. So the laws are not, cannot be neutral. The, the, the laws, they reflect the, the, the ideas of the dominating class. They are like a double-edged sword. It depends who holds the sword. It may be a capitalist that is holding the law, the sword. It might be a socialist. It might be a, a, um, a, a racist government, but it is not neutral. That you should not say, a ah, law is neutral and all that. So when I was coming here, uh, thank God I had, I had a, I saw a, a, an, article, an article by an advocate. There are three events that happened just a um, few weeks ago. Um, that there is a law, uh, a legal practice council that has been established that is now um, all law societies and bar council and everyone who, is in, who was in law society and in all these bar council, it's now one thing. And um, secondly, um, Forte University was uh, produced the first Tosa PhD person and uh, who, who, who just graduated. And Forte is established in, in, a, in a closer, in Eastern Cape. And he has been, it, it has been there for more than 102 years, but only now it has produced one person. 
and everyone was saying ala 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 and yes we we congratulate our sister who against all odds had to do that phd in Tosa. but it is a shame for 40 after 102 years to produce as an african university to produce a Tosa phd graduate and even then sobukwe addressed that issue he said forte university must be a barometer of african thought the african studies must be the main the main course in that university and it must be developed um, it, it stated that as much as the stellenbosch uh, is an african is, is, is an afrikaner barometer and the forte must also be like that but 169 years after he had said that it's only one um, one person who could be produced in 69 years so uh, coming back to this article by this senior counsel it, it, it's it's um, okay Paul Hoffman SC now Paul Hoffman SC is contesting how the elections were conducted or because it was stated that there, there must be four black women, there must be two black men and all that. He says, in a non-racial society, that should not happen because we are now a democratic society. So, uh, you know, we must not put, God does, must not put who must be in the council. He says, um, when he starts, the Black Lawyers Association has welcomed and accepted the outcome of the elections of the new legal practice council. Um, it, its press release reads, to BLA this election represents a total break from the past and the beginning of the new dawn as envisaged by the constitution. And he then said, the BLA seemed to think that the legal professions are somehow part of the apartheid legal order. Actually, the legal profession and the manner in which they are carefully and independently organized antedated apartheid by centuries. During the apartheid, the legal professions were the bastions of freedom and justice. They stoutly and petty, I don't know that word, pertinently resisted all attempts and fusion of the professions and interference in the professional affairs which were attempted. We know it's a lie. It's, it's, it's a lie. And I want to I want to respond to to the SC by quoting because you know I'm a, I'm a junior in the profession, but there is my colleague Christine Kunda, who's a Black Consciousness adherent, dealing with the with the white people that would speak on behalf of Blacks um, in in matters that concerning. Blacks, because he now is dealing with the Black Lawyers Association. He said, then uh, Christian Kunda says, dance of deception. He says, in the meantime, whites mobilize from think tanks and non-governmental organizations funded by Western governments and institutions as well as local white business. These organizations, in partnership with section of the media, act as hyper-vigilant watchdogs purporting to defend the poor and the constitution. They are strident, unrelenting into their new roles as defenders of human rights with a smug self-righteousness that is sometimes suffocating. They present themselves as a bulk work against creeping autocracy, all the while living charmed lives indifferent to the historical debt of justice they, own, uh, they owe Africans. It doesn't occur to them to keep quiet sometimes, <laughs> or, most of, or most of times to take a deep breath, listen, introspect, and maybe for once go back, go to the back of the queue and wait in line. That's what the, the, the liberals have, have, have done. All of a sudden, after 1994, there are all um, sorts of NGO that are act as hyper vigilantes speaking on, be, on behalf of blacks and, and acting as if they have interest of black, black people at heart. Um, 
In conclusion, there is another event that happened that a black, it's not a black, it's a pan-African um, bar association of South Africa was established and its purpose is to promote, um, it's, it's, it's to promote because we, we in, the, in the profession, we are still marginalized. So these uh, sons and daughters of the soil established this um, uh, Pan-African Bar Council um, Association of South Africa. Now, what I wanted to state was that the law is not neutral. And if you care, if you care to check how the, the law is not neutral, you see the, this, this act of taking the land, of robbing the land from Africans was, uh, was enacted. Now, the Constitution states that in order for you to be restituted with the, with the land that was dispossessed, it must have been um, dispossessed after June 1913. At that time, they were just consolidating. They had taken the land. They were just consolidating. So if you, your land was, not, was taken prior to that, you are not going to be, uh, to be restituted. And the other one, uh, before I, I sit down, is the white land claims. Did you know that there were white land claims, white people that would claim for restitution? And they would say um, they, were, they were dispossessed of their land in the former trans sky, uh, in, the, in, the, in the former cis sky, so they must be compensated because the law that was used was the apartheid law. When the state, the state would um, oppose those, but the recent one that was, that was decided, it was in the case of Mr. Phillips, who lodged the land claim for restitution in respect of property owned in Queenstown, in the Eastern Cape. He was paid, he was paid, uh, let me just check, the, the, it was 14 million because because uh, they, used, they used this act that could be identified as the apartheid law. So you, you, you having the land claims uh, jurisprudence that is not catering for the dispossessed. So because they have um, all, the, all the legal documents, they have, um, they have the the title deeds, we don't have the title deeds we, uh, by word of mouth, the land claims, and you must, you must, you, you are saying you are for the land, eh, the land without uh, compensation, without restitution, but I doubt very much that you know what is happening in the land claims court, that the land claims are dismissed day in and day out because there is no proof. Now I'm calling upon you to look at the jurisprudence of the Land Claims Court and to be interested in the matters that are dealt with in that Land Claims Court. You shall see how um, we are now uh, working on eggshells because we need, we don't want to say no, um, uh, the land must be restituted. So to all Africans, they must study law because at the, at the same time, if we study law, and the lawmakers have this mentality, revolutionary consciousness, they will make laws that are according to our needs. And the laws, the law is, is one institution, and the legal city is one institution that deals with every aspect of life. So you must study law so that you influence the jurisprudence and must go out there. It can be used to service the revolution.